Okay, Scott, uh, in Vermont, got your mic here. Um, I got you all squared away, I think. So a little bit of deoxid D5 in that PTT, and it looks like it's working good. I gave you the short screw, too, um, on your mic. You had the original long one, so now you can, I mean, you can tighten this thing as tight as it goes if you want to. You don't have to, but I did. Um, when I was pressing your PTT on the mic tester here, you could see the light was like coming, which basically was unkeying inadvertently. So now, and that pop sound that you hear, that's just the speaker in this thing, the Superstar tester. Um, that's all that is. So it's, it's definitely working good. Um. The channel changing could have just been uh, on the radio. It's probably a combination of the PTT switch may have been sending some current to ground while it, when it shouldn't have or something. Um, it was malfunctioning due to, I think, oxidation in there. And the oxidation could have actually caused the, the voltage maybe to, you know, spike to ground, which could have caused the... Um, the radio to change channel it could have triggered that in the radio but there's no issue now and I literally just sprayed just enough in there I just kind of stuck that in there when you take the mic apart you pull out the um, PTT it'll just pop out and then you can see where the PTT assembly is and you just just a little squirt in there of that and she's working so you know this is the older mic but it still works good Check one two, check one two, hello, check check, hello. One two three, one two. Nice and clear and loud sound. And that's with it about there. It'll get super loud and start feeding back if I uh, if I turn it up. You can also, if that ever happens again, um, you can put in there some um, three in one oil, <clears throat> but I don't really like that idea as much. Because I believe that's going to leave like a residue behind and over time that residue might build up. Where this stuff is fast drying and it just cleans and dries. So it doesn't really leave a, a nasty residue or anything. And, and you can get this stuff online or something. You know, it's probably not the cheapest, but you know, you buy a bottle of it, it'll last you a really long time. And you can use it for other things too, you know. But uh, you can see <laughs> it's got a little dust on the top. It needs a dusting. And that tells you how often I actually use it. But it's it's good to have just in case. I also have this one. And this one's more for like plastic and metal plastic surfaces. Like when you have plastic and metal. It's a little bit different brand. Um, this one I very rarely use, but um, I have used it on some of the Estatic mics. And it kind of works the same way, but I don't know. I kind of just like this one. And, and that one I can't find the squirt tube, you know. This one I like it because it's built in. So I can literally just do that and then put it up on the shelf or whatever. But yeah, I think I got you all set. So... Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, check, check, hello, one, two, no more PTT and inadvertently cutting out on you or anything like that, so, uh, I think that was all that you needed, and, uh, the short screw isn't going to hurt anything either, so, if that ever happens again, just squirt some, uh, of that in there, and I think you'll be all set, let me show you what I'm talking about really quick before I... Get this ready to send back off to you. I'm going to send it back to you with uh, SurePost by UPS. They will deliver it to the U.S. Post Office for you, to your P.O. Box. It will get handed off to the USPS. And they will deliver it to your P.O. Box because they take it directly to a post office. And then what happens is if it was coming to your house via the post office, then the mail carrier will deliver it, but since you have a P.O. box for your return shipping, they'll just leave it at the post office and then let you know that you got a uh, shipment. So do you see right here where the PTT is, those two little notches? And you see where that plastic goes down. I just stuck the nozzle in both of those and just gave it one quick squirt, and as soon as I did that, I just kind of worked the work the PTT back and forth a little bit and just kind of 
I think by doing that we removed the oxidation. So this is the original uh, one when I started selling them. It's a through hole component, still a nice mic. Um, if it wasn't going to be fixable, I would have just gave you a new one because I have some stock. But since it's fixed, no problem there. Uh, I'll be able to sell another new one to somebody. But um, yeah, I like these. I like the new ones. I still have some of these myself, you know, the original one. Anybody ever interested in the Echo one, I have some Echo ones too that are P6 that are wired directly like this one to the Magnum pinout, which is for any tone and radio oddity, Quad 6 and Pro and Washington and QT80 and all that. I have the Echo one. I just haven't even, I haven't got around to listing them on my site. I forget that I have some of these things sometimes because I'm not a real aggressive seller. You know, it's, it's kind of like I do this for fun. So sometimes I forget. One, two, one, two, check, check. Hello, one, two, one, two, hello. So even without the PTT thing in there, it still works. So what you do is you just um, wind this little guy up here, or you can actually push the PTT in, kind of fit that in place, and then stick that in there, and then you're good to go. You got the short screw, so you won't have to worry about the The problem with these ones and if you look down in there, there's a there's a solder pad directly under the head of where that long screw would go. And every once in a while, I don't know if I can see that or not on yours. And it's too dark, but I think we can see that solder pad there. What would happen is if you over tighten that long screw, it would actually cause a short out effect on the board. And you'd lose audio, so the short screw will never allow that to happen on the new microphone with the SMD component the sh the long screw could actually touch one of the SMD resistors and either break it or cause it to short as well so the short screw was something that I had recommended to them back a couple years back and my one good customer George he had actually modified, uh, he added some more like washers to his and stuff like that. And it was a good idea. I think he actually put some on the outside too or something. But to actually physically shorten the screw. But now they, they caught on to what was going on. And now the factory is just making them with the short screws, which is awesome. So I only have about 26 of these left. The newer 6-pin version of the non-Echo. I think I have 8 or 10 of the Echo. And I don't have an estimated date for any new ones. I'm assuming that they will have another production because it's a very popular item for them. But uh, I guess next time I need to buy more. And I have maybe 35 of the 4 pins. So I'm kind of low. I don't like to be under 50 of, of either one. Um, it's just something I like to always have stock because I'm the only one that sells these mics and uh, in America. So it's one of those comfort things. I like to feel comfortable knowing I have a good amount of stock and when I get low I get I don't like that because I don't like to I don't like to have to tell the customer that I, I don't have any if, if there's interest in them. you know it's one of those things where you know you don't know how many you should buy but um, it seems to be every time I get more, I always end up in this predicament where they don't have any more. And it's not that I'm upset or anything. It's just the way it goes sometimes that, you know, when you have a good thing, you like to keep it going and you don't want to make your customer wait or have to actually source it from Europe. Because there probably is dealers in Europe that have stock still, um, considering it's a very popular brand there as well. But for me, I get what I what I think I need for the year based on last year's data, and I'm way ahead on these versus what I did last year. So I guess you know maybe next year I should just get some more. Um, but anyhow, we got you all set, and I'm gonna get this heading back to you. So thanks again. No uh, worries here. It was a simple fix. So we'll put her back together and just show you that it's working one more time. You can have that battery um, as a complimentary thing for sending it in. I'll let you have it. It's brand new, um, and it'll last you a good while, I think. Yeah, I think what happens is it's just the oxidation builds up in there, possibly, uh, over time. 
Sometimes when you wiggle your PTT, you hear that <laughs> If you have one of these, you'll see when that happens that the TX light kind of goes out. It's either it's shorting to ground or something. I'm trying to make it do it now. Like if I let off enough, it will. But that's what it's designed to do, so. Whoa. Play some music here with the squeal sound. Yeah, it's good to go, so. I'm confident that it's going to work good for a while now, so. One, two, three, one, two, three, check, check, hello. Uh, six pin, uh, NM532P6, as I like to call them. That's what they call them, too, the P6. Check one, two, check one, two. Ready to go, hopefully, for another couple years, and then get yourself some of this. Uh... They make all different kinds of deoxid, but this is the one I have, the D5. It should, it should fix you up. All right, 73.